Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. It's 9.23 on September 12th, 2017, Mountain Time. Giving you a space weather update. <clears throat> the last video I made, uh, we just had the historic uh, X flare that came off the side of the sun that missed us. It was a glancing blow. And earlier today, we had some minor C flares. This one in particular uh, shot off a CME. And I warned you that we would get a, a result of this today, a shockwave on the 13th. And here it is. It arrived just a few hours ago, and we're in G1 geomagnetic storm. The KP is 5. We get a quick look at that uh, CME in question right there. That was the X flare from the other day and we can just quick go and look here uh, the solar proton flux we're in uh, S1 storm here and we are in G1 geomagnetic storm here now what does this all mean for us well a number of things we have this massive coronal hole in the north of the sun here that's going to be sending a solar wind stream our way it could be part of this and let's go look over here at ace you can see the speed is up the temperature is way up the density is up this was the shock wave that sent off the uh this is the shock wave event from that massive cme that came off the side of the sun but we didn't get into geomagnetic storm until about six hours later. And that's right here coming over the cusp here. In fact, they don't even show the blast from the other day on Enlil here. But we just came through that. Um, and that's what we're in here in this geomagnetic storm. So you come over to the other charts and you can get a good, pretty good idea. The shockwave came in as about a six hour lull at the peak. We went into storm and here's all the data. So. A few things I want to show you here is that this may intensify uh, as we move into the 13th here, UTC. Um, it might get up into G2 or better, which is going to bring this aurora down into New York or close uh, or somewhere in that general vicinity. And you can look here and see our D region absorption prediction map. If you don't know where any of this is, folks, it's easy to find. Uh, it's at NOAA.gov. This is the Space Weather Enthusiast Communities page. It has all the charts on it for you to see. It's easy to come here and uh, just copy down this link right here if you want to go right there to get the information on the geomagnetic storms. I want to talk a little bit more about cosmic rays and climate in this video because I'm about to post some videos on cosmic rays and climate. Specifically, this talk that it was by Jasper Kirby from CERN and the uh, cloud experiment so this I have a PDF to this that I'm gonna link you to so you can read the whole paper and what the cloud experiment means I'm also gonna have two or three videos on how it works and I'm gonna have a video on this particular one right here on the paper so you're gonna see the video and you also have the hard copy of the paper so you can read the paper to get a better understanding on what uh, our observers in this community uh, believe in what we know. Now, what's happening in, in this grand solar minimum that's very obvious, and you can go check this data, is that galactic cosmic rays are at some of the highest readings ever in history. And they increased 12% last year between March and January, and they're predicted to increase uh, the same amount or up to 19% more over the next period of one year. And the cloud experiment at CERN, what it's proving is that galactic cosmic rays, as they increase, if the flux increases, what that causes is cloud nucleation. And what clouds do, when you have a lot of them uh, in our climate system, is they reflect the sun back into space, and that's called the albedo effect. <clears throat> now, the most important finding at CERN was that the clouds that the galactic cosmic rays produce are at a particular level in our atmosphere that cause a lot of albedo, between 15 and 20,000 feet in particular, is where this galactic cosmic ray flux is causing the cloud nucleation. 
and there's a direct correlation. So on this paper, this is an awesome paper. There's a lot of graphics. Take a look. You're going to be linked to this. We'll really get a great graph on the sunspot cycles that we know of some 1600 till today, showing the Dalton minimum, the uh, Glassberg minimum, the Maunder minimum. Unfortunately, it doesn't show us going into the grand solar minimum here because they like to cut the graph off as the, so the solar cycles fall. But it also includes some novelties like the hockey stick here. So this is really a great paper for everyone in our community to have and to look at. Um, and it has a lot of data. But what you can glean immediately, I'm going to show you this particular graph before we go here tonight, is that the temperature here has a direct correlation to galactic cosmic rays, C14 and beryllium. <coughs> Now, you have to look at this in an inverse relationship, which is interesting. So let me just point out what's going on here. As the temperature increases, the galactic cosmic rays here are not increasing. It, they're decreasing. So when the galactic cosmic rays increase, that means they're going down. And the temperature also goes down. The temperature goes down when galactic cosmic ray flux increases because of cloud nucleation, which we just proved in the last 10 years at CERN and the cloud experiment and Svensmark as well. So this data is great to look at and it'll give you a deeper understanding of what is driving the climate. It's our solar system and our sun. And here you can see, you're gonna get the graphics that allow you to understand what I just told you low cosmic flux is actually up with temperature and high cosmic ray flux is down here at the bottom. So when you have a high cosmic ray flux, the temperature drops due to cloud nucleation, which increases the albedo effect, which reflects more energy back into space and causes more rain on earth, catastrophic flooding and agricultural loss. So please take a look at this paper and get yourself familiarized with the cloud experiment by watching the videos which I will post uh, in the next 24 hours. The Jasper Kirby talk will be posted tonight and the link to the PDF of the paper will be at the bottom of the description in this particular video. So we're in geomagnetic storm and it has to do with this flare that went off the other day the one that gave us a glancing blow, the kill shot into the solar system that did not hit us, thankfully. But it is affecting us. The K index is up, and if it goes any higher, the aurora will come down, and we might have some minor perturbations in our normal daily lives. Nothing significant on this one, folks. Nothing really, ex we're expecting any si anything significant. And the sun, in the grand solar minimum again, has gone silent, flatline. But our electrical environment is quite active here on Earth because of the activity in the last few days. There is a lull time. Check out the magnetogram here. And we can see here we're in some uh, geomagnetic perturbations on Earth in the last 6 to 12 hours by simply looking at this. You typically in a smooth environment, it just goes up and down. But you can see what's happening here. One more quick look at the Enlil. That's the band we're going through. This is the geomagnetic activity that's causing this storm. And you can see we're coming out of the proton flux storm. But here on the electron flux, boom, that's way low. That's crazy low. And there's some other interesting graphs here at spaceweathernews.com where you can see what actually is happening in the atmosphere around the planet and what would be happening to some satellites in these regions. Uh, there's some phenomenon called surface charging, and that's what all these graphs are uh, depicting right here. It's real time, so the dates are at the bottom, and it's like a ticker flowing from right to left, where this is the current time right here. And it moves in real time at spaceweathernews.com. So I hope I gave you some uh, insight on how to uh, check your own space weather, and also on galactic cosmic rays. And uh, I'm going to give you the resources that you need to go research yourself and to become an expert on this so that you'll be able to talk better in our community and you'll be able to defend yourself to those uh, religionists, the uh, fire and brimstone people, the global warming alarmists. Thanks for watching. 
Uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people so we can grow and share the truth to the world. Have a great night. Be safe, everyone.